Legumes are an important component of pastures in the Australian environment. They are used to increase soil fertility, boost yields and improve the quality of companion grasses and following crops. Legumes also provide significant nutritional benefits to livestock when grazed or cut for conserved fodder. Seedforce has been screening and developing a range of pasture legume options to sow alone or as a component in pasture mixes. I recently caught up with Seedforce Director Mike Groot. So can you first explain how subclover has been used and developed over the past few decades? Yeah, in Australia, the, um, the Genetic Resource Centre for Annual Legumes for Acid Soils is based in Perth. And uh, through the, the last couple of decades, there was a, a national um, subclover improvement program. And then that was followed by um, what was called NAPLIP, or the, the, the National Annual Pasture Legume Improvement Program. And those programs were funded largely by the research and development corporations, meat, um, dairy, wool, GRDC um, uh, and Rurdic. So they funded the state departments to breed varieties uh, and they were tested regionally and then most of those were then uh, put up for tender to, for commercial partners. Uh, in recent years obviously there's been a reduction in uh, funding to agriculture so most of those um, departments of agriculture have looked for um, outside sources of funding and have uh, undertaken joint ventures. So in terms of subclover we've set up a new joint venture between Seedforce and, and the De Department of Ag and, and Food in WA, or DAFWA, um, and we've set up a, a new joint venture called um, Australian Legume Innovation, and that's breeding new subclovers. Okay, and so where do subclovers, what kind of climates, climates do they work well in? Well, out of that uh, genetic resource centre pool of some, uh, some 8,000 uh, accessions or lines of subclover, um, there's material that's been suited to um, to largely acid soil, but some for alkaline, and, and they've been adapted to areas of down as low as 275 mils up to maybe 1,200 mils. Um, and over over the um, probably the past past few decades, there's been something like 29 million hectares of subclover sown uh, across parts of Australia. What type of grazing does subclover suit? Well, as its name suggests, sub subclover it buries its seed. It's a subterranean clover, puts its seed into the soil, so it's really well adapted to to set stocking by by animals, sheep or cattle, whereas most of the other annual legumes tend to put their, their seed up above the ground. So that if they're grazed heavily when they're flowering and trying to set seed, um, that seed gets consumed by the animals so they don't produce a lot. So yeah, it's really probably one of the, one of the few legumes that's well adapted to, uh, to set stocking. Okay, and what advice do you have for selecting the best subclover cultivars? Well, there's obviously a range of uh, soil types and rainfall, and, and really what, what farmers need to do is, is talk to their advisors, identify the, uh, the rainfall, identify the soil type, and then find um, the variety that's best suited. Um, what, what they'll find is uh, that, that there are a lot of varieties out there on the market. Some of those have been superseded, but are still there, uh, and then there's the newer varieties. So what they should be looking to is the newer varieties for that rainfall and that soil type to get the best, best genetic gain uh, possible in their pastures. And Mike, how's the joint breeding initiative working to address farmers' needs for today and into the future? Well, from, from a commercial point of view, um, Seedforce uh, has a lot of agronomists out in the field working with farmers and, and we understand their needs. Um, uh, DAFWA have uh, tremendous capacity and expertise in breeding. So the joint venture allows us to, to talk together about farmers' needs and, and uh, what's feasible from a breeding perspective and then try and realise the potential of those needs for, for farmers going into the future. So Tim, what are your thoughts about the new subclover varieties coming from the joint venture? Yeah, I think they're um, um, really exciting for our patch to have varieties. Um, Rosebrook and Narracup with red-legged earth mite tolerance, I think that really uh, will help us uh, with our winter feed gap and provide you know, good quality feed through winter. So do these new varieties mean that farmers will no longer have to spray with insecticides? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's still really important to look after them in the, in the first year, in the, in the establishment phase, get them to set a good amount of seed so that then in subsequent years when they wouldn't normally uh, be running the boom spray over that, that pasture, um, the resistance really comes into its own and, and allows more seedlings through to give that winter feed that guys are looking for. If you'd like to know more about Seedforce's subclover varieties, contact your local agronomist or Seedforce today.